Hello everyone, Sandy here. Alright, this is going to be a long one, so grab yourself a coffee like I have and strap in because we are doing the 2020 deck collection video. I, um, I mean, are you ready? Because I don't know if I am. <laughs> I, um, honestly... Oh, that was hot. I honestly didn't know if I was going to do this video or not. Um, it's a, uh, it uh, <laughs> feels quite overwhelming, um, and that's why I decided to do as many tarot decks as I can in one sitting. And then, if it goes on for too long, I will divide it up into two different ones. But I decided to do tarot separately, and then a separate oracle collection video. So um, we will be looking at my uh, oracle decks in a different video. All right, let's get started. Okay, so uh, in no particular order, because I could not be asked to <laughs> alphabetize. Yes, yes, I know. I'm a really bad librarian, <laughs> but here we go. I'm just going to grab blindly the first one I've got around me. And that is the forest of magic or no, the terror of the magical forest um, by uh, Leo Tang. Uh, it's a low scarabeo deck. This one is trimmed. Um, so I trimmed away all of the titles for this one. And this is a super cute deck that I absolutely adore. I love the size it has now when it's um, trimmed. And I absolutely adore these animals in this deck. Uh, this one has one of my absolute favorite uh, strength cards. I think we actually no, that was the that was the star. The strength card in this deck is one of my absolute faves. Um, I mean, look at that nine of pentacles. Love it so much. <laughs> um, I'm not going to take too long on each deck because then we'll be here forever. But I really want to show you that strength card. I love that empress. Um, oh, that Two of Swords is awesome as well. I love the Fool. Um, where is my... Oh, this Hermit. I love him so much. And uh, I know that this is um, Kelly Bear's um, favourite, one of her favourite decks. And she calls him Hermie. And ever since I heard that, I just see her. I, I just call him Hermie as well. <laughs> um... Where are you? Silly strength card. There it is. Oh, it melts my heart every single time. I love this card so much. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, Tara of the Magical Forest. And then the next deck is, I'm just gonna grab the next one in line, or, or the first one that comes to my hand, mind, and that's, this is the Victorian Fairy Tarot by Lunea Weatherstone and Gary L. Lippincott, I believe. This is one of my treasures, one of my most treasured decks. Um, it's a, out of print, sadly, um, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on a copy uh, from a lovely lady in, I want to say the Netherlands. Um, or was it Belgium? I can't remember now. Anyway, it's a gorgeous deck. It's got a lovely, lovely scent. Because the lady who had it before me stored it together with some scented candles, I believe. And... Um, Honestly, guys, this deck and I 
have bonded so strongly ever from ever since the start. I used it a lot this summer. Um, I'm continued to use it throughout autumn, and uh, it just, yeah, it just reads really well for me. And I love the guidebook as well that Linnea has written. And um, yeah, super gorgeous deck. Gives me all the different feels. Love this death card. It's it's something else. And um, yeah, one of my all-time faves. That one is. Next up, let's look at the oak ash and thorn. So I have both the original Kickstarter version as well as the mini oak ash and thorn. Uh, that's just been released. Um, I will show you both just so you can see the difference in size here. Um, but this deck, oh my goodness, you guys, I best hermit ever. I love Adam Ola's um, artwork. This deck is by Adam Ola and um, Stephanie Burrows. You can see their names there. Um, <clears throat> absolutely gorgeous deck. I do not have the dragon one they've made um, since dragons aren't quite my thing so far at least. Um, I am so looking forward to the um, oracle deck that they are working on called Thistle Down. Um, I actually have an art card that came with the mini Oak Ash and Thorn from that deck that I've got in a frame. Look at this guy! Look at this guy! So, um, yeah, li really, really looking forward to, um, to the, to the Thistle Down Oracle that they are working on at the moment. Um, but yeah, look at this artwork. It's gorgeous. I've actually just ordered the Mass Market Soul Cats uh, tarot that Adam has illustrated as well. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, such a gorgeous deck. I absolutely adore it. And the little one the mini old cash and thorn um, is my little special treasure um, since it handles so much better in my small hands I can riffle shuffle this and um, I have been able to bond with this version a lot better just because I can shuffle it so much easier so um <clears throat> Yeah, there he is again. <laughs> All right, so that was Oak, Ash and Thorn by Stephanie Burrows and Adam Olers. All right, next up is another duo because I've got two different versions of the same deck. And that is the Gentle Tarot by Marisa Tovar or Mari in the Sky as her, as she's known as online. So I got this deck... Um, in the original version first, then uh, Maria Marisa actually sent me the linen version as a gift, uh, which was really kind of her. Uh, she's like she's just the most wonderful person you'll ever meet. She's so kind and so gentle, and it's just the way that she is with all of her followers and and. Um, with everyone she meets it just makes this deck all the better because you know what a beautiful soul she is um she's just so kind and gracious and generous and uh, yeah i just recently received the big guidebook that she's um written as well so i am really looking forward to uh, deep diving and getting to know this deck properly now um i've only i've done a few readings with it obviously because uh, i've had this deck for quite a while 
love her flower of stones she's so gorgeous um i've had this deck for quite a while now and i've loved it for so long but this version even though it is i mean the card it's really luxurious and pretty and it's easy enough to sh overhand shuffle since i started learning riffle shuffling um i have just been loving this little linen version because it is so easy to hold for me and it honestly just shuffles like a dream ah. it of course i can't do it now when i'm on camera <laughs> No, but honestly, it, it does. It does shuffle like a dream, but it's a bit awkward doing it with the microphone between my arms. Um, let's see if I can... <sighs> Lovely. So, yeah, this deck is an absolute treasure as well in my collection. It may gives me the opportunity to tap into something deep and... And uh, I want to say almost primal, like something just completely, um, it's, it's a deck like no other in my collection and I really appreciate it for that. Um, it's very soft, gentle, it has the animal energy, it's got the human energy, the, oh, this moose, I love this card so much more moose in tarot cards please <laughs> so that was the gentle tarot but by marisa tovar all right next one up is my one and only another huge treasured uh, treasured deck in my collection and it is the forest of enchantment tarot Oh, so I've been doing a deep dive study of this deck now uh, that's been stretching out over the year of 2022 uh, and I'm hoping to I'm hoping to finish it now um, as we are wrapping up the year. I have two episodes left uh, as of this moment to film and I'm hoping to film both of them tomorrow. So um, yeah. This is a deck I have been bonding with over this past year. It is a an absolute dream. This is by Linnea Weatherstone, um, same one who created the Victorian Fairy Tarot. And it's illustrated by Mirela Allwood. And honestly, it's, uh, it's something special. It's something else and really something that I don't have anything else of as well in my collection quite like it. I love the guidebook, I love the take on some of the cards, uh, the different take on them. I love the little um, the little um, details that you can find as well. There's, they've crammed in little things like this little owl in here and, and the special birds and the, the botanicals around in the card as well. And um, yeah such a gorgeous deck and a deck that has become quite special in my collection this was the forest of enchantment tarot and this is a bag that my lovely friend krista made for me as a gift and uh, i love it so much all right next up we have the green witch tarot and this one is by Mora. What is her first name? Can't remember. Anne. Anne Mora. And I can't remember who. Uh, and yes, here's the artist as well. Uh, can can you see? Kiri Ostergaard Leonard. Um, is the artist. There we go. This deck is fairly new to my collection, um, but I have already really bonded with it. I feel really... Oh, this strength card, the crone, instead of strength. Um, I feel really connected to this deck already. The artwork is very 
soft and appealing to me and um, I feel like it includes certain aspects um, that I'm missing from some decks and I feel like I really love the fact that this deck includes both plant and animal energy in each card and then we also have some fairies and gnomes and magic and mythology here we've got Hearn the hunter in the wild hunt in and a and a cockerel here in the tower card um it's just yeah beautiful beautiful deck and we have all four seasons in it so it's it's suitable for all any time of year and and the guidebook is honestly also very very good so that was the green witch tarot by Anne Mora and kiri ostergaard leonard all right next up is the mara loon tarot by uh, i presume mara loon uh, these are the beautiful backs uh, this is a card deck that has been ordered from make playing cards um, it's a print on demand deck that you can get both from make playing cards and uh, game crafters i believe the game crafters worst version is linen cardstock which i'm really tempted to get as well um, this deck is such a soft soft little treasure i love the watercolors in it um, it's got inspirations from all over the world i feel and we also have fairy tale creatures here we see a mermaid as the queen of cups um and i just feel like it's a very simple very soft warm and welcoming deck and honestly it's quickly become one of my go-to's um and it shuffles really beautifully as well love this three of swords and i don't say that about a lot of three of swords to be honest um yeah such a beautiful deck the i really love the magician this chariot is one of my favorites uh ever and um yeah gorgeous gorgeous deck really do recommend looking into it if you like soft watercolors like i do and this high priestess is just everything <laughs> so that was the mara loon tarot and that's spelled mara m r m a r a and loon l u n n e she actually wrote out the the pronunciation on her website um so yeah Next up is the wonderful Rainbow Tarot by Sonia Lasso. And this is a brand new deck in my collection, but I have already, as you can see, I've trimmed it. It came with um, these gorgeous uh, rainbow holographic edgings. But uh, being the kind of person I am <laughs> with small hands, I wanted to trim it down so that it could more easily fit into my tiny hands and I'm so glad I did because now it's this cute and quirky little deck um, that is you know as cute in size as it is on the cards and super lovely deck I am falling in love quickly falling in love with this deck the only thing that uh, is still bothering me is the fact that the mages are in French um, according to the Marseille tradition um, it's got like the Marseille titles for the mages and then it's got regular um, English titles for the min minors and the court cards which um, yeah it's a bit confusing to me and uh, there is no guidebook so uh, there is no explanation as to why she's made this choice um which is you know it is what it is i'm still gonna use it and i'm still gonna love it um i don't read marseille so i'm just gonna pretend it's right away smith <laughs> so uh love this ace of cups by the way beautiful deck really quirky artwork um 
really interesting colors as well. Love this eight queen of pentacles. Well, awesome strength card. But yeah, such a cute deck and uh, really looking forward to working with it some more. Next up is the self-love tarot by Hannah Tricor. I think that's how you pronounce that. This is a lovely deck, uh, indie deck. Let's see if I can get that out. So there we go. Um, these backs are just everything. I love it so much. <laughs> the cards are slightly glossy. Uh, or quite glossy, but not super glossy. And the it's got these like golden foil on top of the cards, both on the front and the back. And um, yeah, it's difficult to pick it up. It's in on the camera there. But uh, it's got these really quirky looking people, um, all a little bit <laughs> funny, um, all naked. Um, and I just, I don't know, I really like them. I really like how <laughs> quirky they are and how free they are in their own bodies. And um, I suspect this was very intentional for the, you know, it's called the self-love tarot. And um, yeah, I haven't used it much yet. It shuffles like a dream, though. Uh, I really like the shuffle of this deck. Um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, getting to know this deck better and I was thinking of maybe using it uh, during the um, Lisa Papez is got is having a she's got a book called the self-worth path and she's make she's doing a um, a special one year book club thing um, with that deck or with that book I mean um, in 2023 through her um, uh, memberships uh, videos I think and I think that I will be using this deck in conjunction with that book club um, I think that would be really cool so that was the self-love tarot next up we have the Mons tarot by Joanna Nelson and this is the travel size edition um, this is also I mean fairly new I've had it for quite a while but I have not had a chance to work with it yet I shuffle with it every now and then though because it's a really fun shuffle um, these are just quirky little monsters um, and I haven't really gotten to know them yet. A lot of people love this deck. I know Lisa Papez does. Chris Star from Crochet Witch Tarot loves this deck as well. And um, I know it's um, Marlene's daughter's favorite deck. <laughs> so from Marlene Teresa. She's got a YouTube, YouTube channel here as well. Um, yeah, it's a really pretty cute little deck haven't worked with it yet at all the guidebook seems quite nice um with you know some really um uplifting inspirational meanings here as well and um yeah i feel like i've been you know kind of overseeing this deck a little bit and i need to give it a chance and pick it up some more and maybe actually give it a read I think that would be um, something to look into for next year. <laughs> now, something that you're going to hear me say a lot in this video is that this is a new deck <laughs> because I have a lot of new decks that I haven't had a time, had any time to work with yet. So, our uh, next one is also brand new uh, came in a couple of days ago and that is walking meditation tarot by daniel norman and uh, this one i bought second hand from a lovely person uh, called sarah and she sold me this deck um, through a facebook group i believe um, so this deck comes with two different guidebooks one is for the actual deck uh, the Walking Meditation Tarot Guidebook. The second one 
is an actual guidebook to walking meditation, which I actually really love. And I'm looking forward to go getting to know this deck so much. Um, it's gorgeous, um, na like nature landscapes with... Um, yeah, like that's been this photograph that's photographs, I believe, that have been treated to look like paintings. Um, and I, I do understand the concept and I, I kind of like it. But at the same time, I almost wish that uh, they were photographs because I really love photographic decks. Um, that's something new that's developed this year as well. I didn't used to love like photographic decks like at all i thought they look looked a bit cheesy i don't know um but when they're done right they're just so gorgeous but yeah this is a super gorgeous deck and i really can't wait to dig into the guidebook um and get to know this deck a bit better look at that red card and all lovely all right, so that was The Walking Meditation Tarot by Danielle Norman. Look at those. That's a, you know, edging. Lovely. Next up, another brand new deck that arrived at the same time as The Walking Meditation, and that is the Anima Mundi Tarot by Megan Wireweeden. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Um, this is a deck that I have been wishing for for years i've wanted this deck for so long and always talked myself out of it because of the pippish nature of the uh, miners these are the lovely backs honestly this deck has one of my all-time favorite card stocks ever it's got this really matte soft linen card stock and it's so bendable and like flexible it's a dream to shuffle absolute dream the only thing is i find the gilding too harsh on my hands all all these you know shiny gildings are too harsh on my hands so i actually might end up de-gilding this at some point but yeah gorgeous gorgeous deck super lovely oil painting style art um i absolutely adore this deck to bits i've loved it for years and i only just got it and honestly this this pentacle card this ace of pentacles is like the most gorgeous thing i've ever seen <laughs> so um yeah can't wait to get to know this deck better i've only just received it another favorite page of pentacles oh Oh, the King of Pentacles has my heart. Honestly, um, it's just yeah. These were the, these are the kind of cards that that uh, kind of uh, made me hesitate because I am not a very. I haven't felt ready for pips, and they kind of they feel very pippish these ones. Um, so yeah, but I'm I'm really looking forward to um, at least. If I need to re learn how to read one pippish deck, it has to be this one and the walking meditation. <laughs> All right, so this was the Anima Mundi uh, tarot by uh, Megan Wireweeden. Next up is this lovely little deck. Um, it is the Heart Spun Tarot. And for the life of me, I can't remember the creator's name now. She's got a shop on etsy which is where i bought this uh, if you just search for the heart spun tarot you will find it and this deck is just the cutest little um rider weight smith clone you will ever see um it is basically rider weight smith but with animals <laughs> instead of people and i just i adore this deck it's tiny pocket sized it's like very lovingly painted with watercolors and um, some of the cards just make my heart sing it's um, such a beautiful deck 
and I seem to have it all topsy-turvy in here. <laughs> Um, yeah, look at that page of swords. I just love how she gets emotion across in these animal faces. Um, in her... Look at that. Gorgeous. And this sun card is just one of my absolute favorites. Look, how can you not be happy when you see this card? Oh, and this magician and this this star card fantastic so this is the heart spun tarot i want to say her name is lisa but i don't want to i don't want to misspeak either so um yeah i might put it in here if i can remember next up is the golden girls tarot um this was a gift from my lovely friends Andy and Krista, and uh, these are the backs. So this is a really fun little novelty deck uh, based around the world of the Golden Girls. And I love me some Golden Girls. It's like the ultimate, the ultimate cozy TV show to put on when you don't have anything else you want to watch and you just want to be cheered up a little bit. Um, and this deck is honestly so well done um i really love the color scheme the choices they've made for picking the characters um for each card and the likeness of the actresses as well is really spot on i really like this deck um i haven't read much with it so i don't really know how well it reads but just sitting and flipping through it um <laughs> has given me so much joy already so um yeah super super happy about this deck <laughs> next up we have the wild unknown tarot now this there's a bit of a story behind this one i decided to get it after deciding not to get it <laughs> and then it arrived uh, I looked high and low for the right printing edition of this um, from the mass market editions and I found it on book depository or so I thought when it arrived it was still the edition I did not want which was the Harper one edition um, before this edition, there was a different imprint um, edition with, oh, I want to say Harper, Harper something, I can't remember now what it was called. But anyway, um, it clearly stated in the book depository um, post, or whether you had listed the deck, um, that the deck was with the other imprint so when I contacted them I had to send them a few messages before they understood what I meant um, and then they saw it and they corrected it and they actually refunded me this whole deck so this is a deck that I have basically received for free um, but it's also a deck that I have never ever managed to bond with um i have a really hard time reading this and i feel like either i'm at fault or i just don't get this maybe this deck is just not for me um i am feeling really inspired though to give it an honest chance and to actually study the guidebook and to go and uh, look and read through carrie mallon's blogs blog posts she's gone through and basically written a whole blog post for each and every card of this deck and I feel like if I went through and read that and worked with this deck through that blog I might actually uh, start loving this deck um, which I really wish to I really really wish to be part of this um, and understand the deal with this deck because everybody seems to love it so much and um, yeah I ended up trimming this uh, deck a little bit because the the when it came to me the the edges were really rough and horrible. Um, so by trimming it myself, I ended up being making it a lot smoother um, as well. And I have been actually thinking maybe I should trim off 
the board white border all together. I haven't decided yet. But anyway, that was the Wild Unknown Tarot. Still uh, largely unknown to me. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully next year will be the Wild Unknown year for me. All right. The Relative Tarot is next. And this is also a... Um, Quite a new deck, bought it second hand from a lovely person in Germany, I believe. Um, or was it Poland? I can't remember now. Uh, this is by Carrie Perez and um, got it mainly for the guidebook because it's quite different. Um, but here we go, we also have the cards. Like you can see, I haven't really um, even looked through it properly yet. Um, but I, I decided to give it a go because I think the collage work in this deck seems really interesting. Um, it combines the traditional Rider Waite Smith with, like you can see here, this traditional Rider Waite Smith uh, imagery and we have um, different um, lovers cards to choose from, three different ones which I think is really, really cool. And yeah, it combines uh, to the traditional artwork from the Rider Waite Smith with old timey uh, pictures, uh, like photographs. And I think that's a really fun, really fun, fun idea. So yeah, I'm really, uh, yeah, we also have several different strengths and justices, so you can decide what number you want to have it have on it so it's a very like customizable deck in that sense yeah super um interesting deck that i'm actually now really looking forward to digging into because i think it's actually quite pretty um definitely cutting off the gilding on it though um I seem to have an aversion to gilding, so at least the flashy kind. Um, so anyway, if I cut it down to the artwork, I'll be able to riffle shuffle this as well, which is what we want, isn't it? So and next up is the Nil Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot. Um, this is a deck that I got uh, purely because uh, I had a reading from Lisa Papes with this deck and it just blew me away and I really wanted to dig into this deck. I bought it a while ago but it is still in order. I have not started working with it yet. Um, I've been saving it, I feel, for a time where I am a little bit more susceptible uh, or maybe that's not the right word a little bit more a little bit stronger in myself maybe because um, I feel like this deck might be a little bit um, I don't know it can go both both ways somehow I feel like it might be quite gentle and in other pictures I feel like it might be quite harsh um, but the one thing that made me made me uh, finally decide on getting this deck is that Linnea Weatherstone has written the guidebook for it and um, since I love so many of her other decks I just felt like I had to get this and um, yeah looking forward to spending some more time with this very soon because uh, the artwork is really growing on me to be honest. When I first saw it, I really didn't like it at all. Um, but now, the more I see it, the more I really feel like, ooh, I want to I wanna dig into this. <laughs> Alright, next up is the John Bauer Tarot. Another deck that I got at the same time as the Nicoletta Ciccoli. Uh, this deck I got, I had been thinking about getting this for quite a while. These are the backs. Um... I haven't worked with it much yet, 
Uh, this one also kind of intimidates me a little bit, and I don't know why precisely, because I've grown up with John Bowers' artwork in the fairy tales that were read to me as a child. I love John Bower. I used to have John Bower art prints on my wall as a child and as a teenager, and um, I think I actually had this one um, as an art print. Um... Yeah, it's. Uh, I've been a little bit intimidated, I think, by people saying that it's really difficult to read and that it wears, or, like, veers away from uh, the traditional meanings quite a lot. And there's a lot of people who have trimmed it and made their own oracle decks from it, uh, etc. But I really kind of feel like I want to try and give the the um, the book a go, like try and read it as the as it was intended um first and see if it really is that difficult to read i love this strength card it's perfect so i mean it is a curated art deck so it wasn't the artwork wasn't made for tarot um but yeah so those can sometimes be a little bit hit and miss, but I am definitely hoping that I will take the time to um, properly get to know this deck soon. Next is the my only Chris Ann deck, and that is the Tarot of Curious Creatures. Um, I saw this deck and I thought, nope, I really don't want this deck. I have had a hard time feeling connected to any Chris Ann deck for some reason. But then I was convinced by my friend Andy and Krista. Um, they both, or at least Andy had this deck and she pulled some cards for me and I just fell in love with the guidebook. And now when I've had this for a while and I've pulled some cards and I've flipped through it and I've read through the guidebook, a little bit. I just, I really adore these characters. They are so lively, so, uh, I don't know, unique. I really love, oh, I love this Queen of Cups. I really, really love this deck. Um, and the cards make me laugh. They rigid, they, they just make me happy. And uh, yeah, love the colors as well. The colors are absolutely fantastic in this deck. And um, I need to use this deck more. I really do. <laughs> I love this little bear, bear paw. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, love it. All right. So that was The Curious Creatures uh, by Chris Ann. Next up is the Star Tarot, and this is brand new to my collection. I got this, was it two days ago, I believe? This is the first edition. Uh, I got it secondhand from a lovely person in Iceland. Um, bought it from her for a really reasonable price. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting into all of this symbology in these cards. I am obviously going to print it because it's like larger than my hand. <laughs> but that's why I got this specific edition as well, because I didn't want to get the newer one because the newer one is also larger than a regular tarot card, but it's borderless which means I wouldn't be able to trim it um, and I need to trim large cards otherwise I can't use them and I can't but if I can't use them I can't bond with them and if I can't bond with them then what's the point you know if they're just gonna sit there so um, this deck is super colorful lots of stars lots of like um, astrological symbols, lots of other kinds of symbols all over the place. And I am not much for astrology, that should be said, but I really want to read the guidebook anyway to see what it has to say. And honestly, the artwork is really stunning. I really love this hermit. Um, and just 
overall I really like the artwork in this deck. I also like how many, there's so many bears in this deck. Um, there's a bear in every other card and I am just so here for it. <laughs> I love it so much. Look, here's, here's bears again. <laughs> and yeah, so um, I am really looking forward to working with this deck, another bear. Um, so yeah. Uh, but first we're going to trim it and then we're going to study the guidebook and yeah I might let me know if you want me to to uh, bring you along for that Next up is another new tarot deck. Uh, this is the monsoon tarot, which I backed on Kickstarter I've got number 176 out of 999 and this is the standard edition comes in a regular tuck box and it has no gilding. It's got a lovely linen cardstock finish. Um, however, the card, like I haven't really used this deck yet. I haven't had the time to get to know it. Um, I've done a, I've flipped through it and I've noticed the blob faces uh, that I mentioned in one of my other videos. And honestly, somebody commented and said, you know, I see it as like a dreamscape deck and and I mean as they said that I really understand why the blob faces because sometimes when you have a dream you you might dream about somebody but the faces aren't quite clear um, so I kind of get it but that doesn't that doesn't um, change the fact that I still kind of feel they're a bit creepy <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, the guidebook isn't very much of much, much use. It's just got some keywords in it, um, which is a shame because I would have loved to read more about the what they mean by certain uh, depictions in here. Um, so yeah, pretty deck, but a little bit inconsistent in the art. Art styles where some of them look very anime and some of them look very, I don't know, different kinds of anime, I suppose. But anyway, still gonna give you a chance. And that was the Monsoon Tarot. Next, we have the Lua Tarot by Marie Bento. This is a gorgeous deck that I bought second hand um, as well. And it's really pretty, but I still haven't been able to really connect with it. Um, I haven't had much of a chance to read with it, to be honest. Well, I've had a chance, I suppose, but I haven't. Um, it's a black and white deck, but it's an it's an art collage deck, um, and it's really skillfully made. I must say, it's so pretty. Um, and I'm so happy that I've got it in my collection. Um, and I really should take the time to get to know it. I just feel like it, it feels a little bit cold. And I think that's just because it's black and white. Um, and I think that I might just need to learn to get to know it, you know, a little bit better uh, in order to... Um, in order to uh, connect with it. That's an awesome death card, though. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, the Lua Tarot by Marie Bento. All right, next up is the Dreamkeeper's Tarot uh, by Liz Huston. Um, another fairly new deck. Um, haven't worked with it much. <laughs> like you can tell, this is the theme of <laughs> this is the theme in my collection at the moment. I have gathered a bunch of decks and not had any time to actually sit down and get to know them properly or much less read with them i don't have that many <laughs> that many problems to read about or i suppose i do but i haven't had the the energy to delve into it i suppose but yeah this is a very pretty deck um very dreamlike I suppose I haven't used it much yet um, I am a little bit annoyed about the lack of diversity um, well actually I'm quite annoyed by the lack of diversity in, in most of the decks um, but yeah 
I still feel kind of drawn to the dreamy world of this and I am really looking forward to the digging into the guidebook because I have read that the guidebook is super interesting. So um, yeah, I mainly got this for the guidebook, hoping that I will be able to get to know this deck a little bit better pretty soon as well. Next up is the Shadowscapes Tarot. Now, I filmed a walkthrough of this, a first impressions walkthrough, and I ended up not publishing that walkthrough because I was in quite a crabby mood, I think, when I filmed it and uh, ended up being very... Um, it was not a good video, let's just say that. Um, I love these backs, actually, and I really love the the uh, size of the cards and and the way it shuffles. Um, I have not worked with this deck basically at all yet. Um, I think just because I had that really bad bad first impressions, I think. Um, I don't know what it is about it. It just leaves me kind of cold. I don't seem to be connecting with the artwork at all, which I don't understand. It's watercolors and it's gorgeous. Um, I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. I thought that I was going to love this deck. I really did. Like, I was certain of it. And um, for some reason, it's just leaving me cold. I'm so curious to to try and read more with it, though to just kind of like force myself force myself through it to see what it is. I want to explore why I'm feeling such an aversion towards this deck for no good reason at all. Um, yeah, I'm actually quite surprised uh, by by my my reaction to this deck. So um, yeah, it's it's um, it's that's a, a, a mystery for another day. But this was the Shadowscapes Tarot by Stephanie Puy Mun Law. And I will put it back in its big box because it's going back in on the shelf. Next up is my Gaian Tarot. <laughs> Sorry, Gaian Tarot. Gaian Tarot. Um, so I, th I actually have two copies of this as well. I have one copy, which is the Schiffer. Is it Schiffer? Now I'm uncertain if it's the Schiffer edition or what it is. Well, either way, the one f uh, mass market edition that's still in print. Um, but then I was lucky enough to score a oh, an out of print Llewellyn edition um, through a trade, um, and I am just oh, so in love with this smaller version. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. I love the artwork um, by oh why could why do I keep forgetting her name. Her name is Kolba, Kolba, but what's her first name? Joanna Powell Colbert. Yes, that's it. Um, and yeah, super, super in love with this deck. There are some cards that give me pause, I won't lie. Um, but overall, this deck is very interesting and the guidebook is amazing. And this is one of the decks that I am hoping to deep dive in 2023. Um, and I've actually ordered the um, Herb Crafters Tarot that is by the same artist, Joanna Powell Colbert. So this... Elder of Earth is just amazing. I love her so much. 
Um, so yeah, this deck is a very special treasure in my collection. Uh, out of print deck. And, uh, or at least this edition is out of print. And yeah, super, super excited to have it. Next up is a good old fashioned tarot of A. E. Waite, a Rider Waite Smith original. <laughs> so this is just, you know, your good old Rider Waite Smith. Uh, not unfortunately, well, it doesn't have Pixie's font or calligraphy, uh, but it is a very nicely clean printed copy. Um, and one that was quite popular a few years ago. It's the Premium Edition by AGM. Um, and yeah, I use this deck mostly for study. I have never actually really read with it. Um, so yeah, but I, I, I've been using it in my deep dive study of the Forest of Enchantment tarot and um, use it also for reference in certain things uh, because it's it's big clear pictures and the coloring isn't the the tackiest either it's quite quite subdued and very very nice and clean so that was the tarot of ae weight published by agm and i really like this little easy to use box as well. Next up is my lovely Triomphe de la Luna uh, illustrated pips edition by Patrick Valenza. Um, this deck was such a surprise to me. I didn't think I was going to get it. Uh, ended up not being able to resist. And I just, I love these quirky characters. They are so cute in my eyes um, and had the most fun doing the first impressions walkthrough of this deck. They have such uh, personalities these creatures and honestly yeah I am so happy that I actually um, ended up getting this limited edition um, Triomphe de la Luna illustrated pips. I think he only printed 500 copies and I don't know if he's going to print any more than that. But I might be wrong. Um, either way, really love the pips in this. The illustrated pips. The temperance is really fun. Um, my favourite card in this deck. Oh, <laughs> I love this seven of coins. I think that's my favourite. Um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's the um, Patrick Valencia's Triomphe de la Luna, and I also should have brought my other Patrick Valencia deck in here at the same time, but we'll get to it eventually. Next up is the beautiful Carte Postale Tarot. Um, well, I can't, I, I can't actually, I don't actually think I know the creator's name. I don't think she, she just goes by carte postale everywhere. So I, I don't know if I've actually ever learned her real name uh, or if she's even, you know, told anyone her real name. Anyway, this is a gorgeous indie deck and I actually have two copies of this as well because I participated in a, um, I participated in a giveaway for this deck and uh, but I wanted to get the deck at a discounted price and she was having a discount and um, the discount price time ended before the the uh, giveaway was announced and I had already bought it and it was already you know shipped out to me by the time um, she announced that I had won um, one deck for me and one deck for my friend so I sent the my uh, my one of my decks uh, then because I won two decks I want one for her and one for me so I sent one of them to Krista um, and the other one I have still wrapped in the gift wrapping um, 
here on my shelf. Um, so yeah, uh, this is a very special deck to me. Um, I really bonded with this deck straight away. I think it's really beautiful. It's made out of old postcards. The creator has a collection of, I think she said 10,000 postcards that she has now curated into a deck. And I believe that her plan is to make a second deck um, essentially creating a build your own deck experience. Um, so the, uh, the new deck is going to have the exact same cardstock and the exact same backs. Um, and, and then you'll be able to uh, pick and choose the cards that um, you connect with the most um, and create your own deck, which I think is super cool. But yeah, really lovely deck. Love these cards, and the honestly the the she did a, such a good job with the cardstock because she said she wanted them to feel like old postcards, and they really do. Uh, they really really do. It's a bit difficult to shuffle sometimes because it keeps sliding away from you. Um, but. Yeah, love the way it shuffles anyway, because it sounds so nice. <laughs> that was the carte postale tarot, spelled like that. Next up is uh, the Lucid Dreams Beginners Tarot uh, with keywords. I ordered this from all the way from Australia, I believe. It's got um, linen cardstock. I've never used this deck, honestly. It's gorgeous. Look at these matte gilded um, edges. Honestly, this is the kind of gilding I want on decks. If you're gonna put gilding on anything, put it put this gilding um, because it's it's soft and and lovely to touch. It doesn't hurt your hands. But yeah, this is a gorgeous deck, but I have never read with it, and I don't know why. I got it and I just put it away. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a mystery to me <laughs> because it's got the keywords. So I, I mean, I, I, I bought it for study, um, but I suppose I just haven't had the, any inclination to do much study other than the study I've already done with, with the, some other decks. Um, so yeah, I know this deck was very popular at one point, um, and a lot of people were asking for it in the buy and sell groups. Um, so I don't know if I don't end up starting using it. If I don't start using it soon, I think I might trade it or sell it or something. Because it's completely unused. Um, I think I've shuffled it a couple of times. Maybe pulled one or two cards. But that is it. So, yeah, these are the gorgeous backs, by the way. Very minimalist, uh, very beige. <laughs> Next up, we've got The Spacious Tarot by Carrie Mellon and... Oh, what's her name? R Wright, but... Annie. Annie Wright, if that's how you pronounce that. So, this deck, I actually had two copies of this as well by accident it was set, uh, an, a, a replacement was sent out to me because the first one was a little bit off um and i traded one of them i traded the better one i think i, I kept the one that was off i think um Anyway, I can't even remember what it was that was off with it, but I got a, a replacement sent out anyway. Um, and I've traded one of them, so I only have the one left. Um, anyway, haven't much used it, I must admit. I've had it for quite a while, and it is largely unused. For some reason, I it's just... I keep, I keep circling back to the same decks, and... I have so many decks that are new to my collection that I have not even begun to um, connect with yet. So, and this is one of them. I've had it for ages, just haven't started yet. Um, I love the artwork though. I love the 
the spaciousness of it. <laughs> and I also love these bears. Oh, so good. So, but yeah, if I don't end up starting to get to know this one yet still uh, after another year, I think I might just have to let it go because I feel badly having a beautiful, beautiful decks that people could enjoy just sitting here. Anyway, so that was the Spacious Tarot. Next up is the Wisdom of the Depths Tarot. A fairly new deck to me, also bought second hand. Um, haven't done a walkthrough of this yet, haven't really looked through it either. I've been um, saving it for a rainy day, I suppose. Uh, this is a collage deck, um, really pretty ocean themed deck is my only ocean themed deck actually and um, yeah Mo not much to say about it since I haven't gotten to know it yet um, but yes couldn't resist the temptation when I found it for a really good price uh, second hand um, so, and I really have been enjoying my collage decks lately. And I think it's, it's super pretty, don't you think? Oh, love me a whale. All right, we're not going to start <laughs> a walk through here now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, that was the Wisdom of the Depths Tarot, still completely unknown to me. Next one up is the Future Ancestor Tarot. This one was a lovely gift from my lovely partner for our anniversary, I believe. Uh, I had wanted this deck for quite a while and he got it for me and that's why this deck is super special. Um, it's a very slippery linen cardstock. I would have preferred it to be a little bit more matte so that it wouldn't slide around so much uh, because I tend to, you know, just chuck it to the floor whenever I have a chance. <laughs> um, it's a very um, minimalist but heartwarming deck. I really love the artwork and the guidebook that comes with it is very minimalist. It's basically not even a guidebook, it's a leaflet. Um, she's The creator has actually written a guidebook to go with it, but and it's in pre-order status right now, I believe. And I really, really want it, but it's very expensive. It's very, very expensive. I believe it was up towards 60 euros and that's before shipping and taxes uh, and it's just it's just too much for me um, to spend on a guidebook for a deck that I already paid that my boyfriend <laughs> already paid um, up towards was it 80 plus euros for here in Europe with in import tax and everything things get very expensive very fast um, when we ship in decks from the US. So even if he bought this from a European reseller um, or retailer, um, they add the European VAT tax on top of it and um, then it's the shipping costs as well. So yeah, I really do did want to get the guidebook but it just it's just not possible for that price i really felt a little bit upset actually because the deck itself should come with a guidebook and if it doesn't come with a guidebook the guidebook shouldn't cost nearly as much as the deck um but that's just my opinion of course i understand that it's a it's an indie creator and they deserve to charge for their lovely work. I absolutely understand that. Um, but from a from a consumer point of view, um, it's just not feasible for a lot of people, including me. So that was the 
Future Ancestor Tarot, a very cherished deck in my collection. And this was is written and created by Lexa Luna Studio. Next up is my gorgeous Stella's Tarot. Uh, this was bought straight from the creator in Japan and it is signed by her as well, by Stella herself. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous deck. Haven't worked with it or gotten to know it much yet, but it's a deck that I had wanted for years. And when I ordered it, I waited for it to get here for three months before it arrived. So, um, it's a super interesting deck, a little bit quirky, a little bit uh, different in its interpretations. These are the backs, by the way. Um, it's got court cards that are tho Thoth, I believe, um, inspired. And um, some of the meanings in some of the cards are also Thoth. I'm not quite sure. I haven't studied the deck yet, so I can't really say for sure what the what the deal is with this deck. Um, but yeah, it's a collector's item for sure, um, seeing as it is basically out of print here in in Europe and the US, and goes for all out of print prices over here. But if you are interested in getting this deck, you can reach out to the creator on her Facebook page and see if she still has some in stock that she can sell to you. Because, yeah, super pretty deck and I am really happy to have it. I suppose that I should have um, tried to, I don't know, divide these into categories or something and if you would have preferred that please let me know and I will do that next time. Um, I just felt so overwhelmed by the whole task that I just thought I'm just gonna get into it and um, you know just show you all the decks um, randomly. <laughs> anyway um, I do have three very similar ones here. Uh, I have the Universal Weight uh, Pocket Tarot Deck. This one is, uh, I really love these backs actually. This is one of the first, um, one of the first decks I got um, after getting back into tarot and I really love the the coloration of this deck is done by um, Mary Hansen Roberts, um, you can see there, and it's the pocket version of it. And I just, um, yeah, I really like the softness of this one, and I've used it for um, study purposes, as you can see. And uh, yeah, really like the, the size of this one. Then we also have um, two more. Um, Rider Waite Smith versions. These are all um, looking for new homes, I think. Well, actually, not not the next one, but this one I've been thinking about gifting to a friend. Um, <clears throat> so this is the uh, Borderless uh, Smith Waite Tarot deck, um, which has the same coloration as the Centennial edition but it's borderless. And I generally just don't use this, so that's why I've, I'm thinking of rehoming it. But, you know, holding it now, it's quite pretty actually. Hmm. So that was the borderless edition of the Smith Wade Tarot. And at the same time, um, I'm going to show you the Centennial Edition pocket version in a tin, um, which is one I'm, I use fairly 
often also for studies but I really like this one actually um, I like the size I really like the centennial coloration as well um, although I have been looking at the Lillian Roses edition on uh, make playing cards that one looks really good so I'm not going to show you any more of the these you all know these cards I'm I'm assuming <laughs> so next I'm going to show you a very special deck this is my very first tarot deck ever my grandma got me this um, um, in a shop when I was about 13 14 years old these are the backs and it's the Londa tarot by the way now I don't really read with this anymore um, it's um, a deck that really it's just so nostalgic for me for obvious reasons um, I was very drawn to these weird um, creatures as a teenager <laughs> not so much anymore though uh, they're a bit creepy looking to be honest um, but yeah this is the Londo Tarot and I feel like all of the characters kind of look the same <laughs> nowadays um, but yeah very flamboyant <laughs> it's not really a deck that um, speaks to me anymore but um, yeah it's still I'm still never gonna get you rid of it it's um, part of my tarot history um, so that's the Londa tarot by Londa and this my friends is my um, second tarot deck ever uh, the golden tarot of Klimt this one um, I also got as a teenager um, and I honestly I don't think I ever read with it um, it hasn't has barely been shuffled I think it's yeah I think I've put it back in order as well I've had it for ages and I just never I, I think I just mainly got it to look at the artwork because I was uh, as a teenager, I really felt um, I really liked Klimt's artwork, and of course, I th still think it's very beautiful. But um, so this one has golden stamping on it. You can see that. I don't know. The backs are really cool. Yeah. Haven't, uh, like I said, really even tried to connect with this deck. It's got some really creepy people in it as well. <laughs> like I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know if I, I don't really connect with this deck anymore either, or if I ever did, I don't know. Um, it's just one of these things that I remember getting as a teenager and just never using it. So that was the golden Klimt. Golden Tarot of Klimt. It's a low scarabeo deck. And this one was probably bought sometime in the early 2000s. So. Alright, let's just keep going with low scarabeo decks, shall we? This one my dad actually bought for me um, this summer. Uh, it was of trip we took to Sweden um, to visit my grandparents uh, because my granddad was uh, very ill and not very uh, yeah he was very ill and he's not with us anymore now uh, so it was the last time I saw my granddad and um, when we went to visit them in one of the shops I saw this one and my dad said that he would get it for me um, I haven't really taken the time to get to know this one yet it's uh, pretty uh, with some cards and kind of funny in other cards and a bit confusing in others I really love really love this this card here <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah. So, Tor as a ch for the chariot. Tor again for strength. <laughs> or Thor, I suppose you say it in Tor in Swedish. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, there's some, some really cool cards in here, but also some really funny ones, like um, uh, there's this one. <laughs> Is it the nine? Yeah, the nine of cups. <laughs> this one just cracks me up every time. Just look at, look at this pose. <laughs> yeah, so that's the gorgeous backs, by the way. And uh, that's the Vikings tarot. So... Um, it's going to be fun to get to know this deck as well. Okay, from that one thing to a completely other thing, here's the Happy Tarot by Serena Ficha, or Ficha? Ficha, I think. Um, this is a deck I got um, maybe about a year ago. I had a bit a spot of trouble with it. Uh, I um, got sent... I got sent um, a, a new copy for it because it was um, one. The copy I got was damaged, and uh, this is the newer copy. And uh, yeah, this is actually a really good exercise because now I'm looking at it. And I'm like, why haven't I read it with this one for so long? Um, it's uh, such a jolly little deck, and. Um, I need to revisit most of these decks. I think I've been snowy. I've been kind of uh, focusing very hard on just a few decks in my collection lately, and I feel like I've been completely ignoring the rest of them. Um, but this card, this 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 deck, um, is a deck I really should, um, you know, reconnect with. I think. <laughs> Right, so that was the Happy Tarot. Okay, um, next up, uh, we're going to take this uh, random one, Wandering Traveller Tarot deck. This was a gift sent to me by Andy. Um, Andy from uh, Metaphysics Made Easy on Etsy. Um, she sent me this... Yeah, as a gift. And I haven't actually t had the time to use this one yet um it's quite a different looking one it's a very um very interesting actually it's got very a very different style to it and it's quite pippish um quite minimalist although not when i mean the 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 color scheme is very like special uh, as well it's kind of like subdued and yeah i really love the size of it um she's edged it in this pale pink as well but yeah haven't really um like i said gotten to know this one yet it's very, uh, very interesting, and uh, that's a cool tower, the with a lighthouse there. <laughs> All right, so that was the wanderer, wandering traveler tarot. Next is the fountain tarot. This was. Also, one of the first decks I got, I think, uh, starting over with tarot. Um, this is the mass market version, though. So maybe it's not. I can't remember anymore. I don't remember in which order I've got in my decks. Um, I probably should have kept some kind of record. That would have been fun. Um, but yes, I have trimmed off the gilding on this one. Because uh, the gilding was really shiny and it annoyed me. And I feel like it's such a nice, much nicer deck now without the silvery thing on it um 
So yeah, I would have trimmed it down even more. Um, but since the... And I think I might actually trim it down to just like having the titles on it. Um, but to be honest, I really have not been using this deck um, in a long, long time. So I... Uh, if I decide to pick it up again and start reconnecting with it, I mean, which is really beautiful, isn't it? Then uh, I will definitely retrim it because now, actually, it's not that. It's not that um, big, but it is quite stiff. I wonder if I'll be able to shuffle, refill, shuffle this. Love this page of coins. Why am I not reading with this? Okay, I don't I don't particularly care for this world card. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Um But yeah. There's something about this magician card that irks me as well. Anyway, I love this Queen of Cups though. So it's it, this is kind of like a, a, a deck that I have some cards that I really love and some cards that I just meh. So maybe that's why I haven't really reached for it. That was the Fountain Tarot. Next up is another deck that I really haven't even used. It's the Gill Tarot. I got this one because I was so inspired by Casey Flowers, who really loves this deck, and I thought that I was going to really love this deck, but since I'm not a huge uh, esoteric person in that sense, which might sound weird to you because I'm into tarot, but I, I really, I really, really dislike these backs. Like, very much. I, I don't really understand I, I mean i haven't studied the kabbalah and i don't like i don't intend to um so yeah this is a deck that has completely completely just uh, not been used by me i love this art the front artwork the the miners i'm not so sure about um I just don't know. If I would, but if I were to like trim it down and reback it, and I don't know, use it as more of an oracle, maybe I don't know. Uh, some of the the artwork is really speaking to me. Like I know that I love, 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 love the Empress in this deck. Where is she? The Hermit is also gorgeous. Really, really love the Empress look. This is a gorgeous Empress. I love her so much. And the Priestess is also really cool. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you might think badly of me for not being into Kabbalah, but it's just not, it's just not a thing. Um, so the Gil Tarot is currently being completely unused and it's probably going to uh, be, it's been in my purgatory section of my um, shelf, tarot shelf for quite a while and I just haven't had the energy to try and sell it on yet, so next we have the dark mansion tarot now i didn't use this for the longest time because i couldn't shuffle the rose petal but now when i can riffle shuffle it's a bit easier um it shuffles quite okay it's quite bendy and honestly, the artwork in this is just really cool, isn't it? I um, I really love the colours. Um, I do have a problem with the, like, stick figure arms. 
<laughs> I don't know why. They just really bother me. But um, I'm working on that. I just... I know, because I know it's a cartoony style of artwork. It's just... I have been... I mean, this waist, I just can't. <laughs> I just... I need some meat on my people, you know. I, I just need to um, see at least... I mean, not everyone needs to be. I just need some diversity in the bodies. I, I need to have some fat women and some fat men and just show, just show the... Even if it's cartoony, like, show me a cartoony fat person then, you know? Um, I don't know, maybe I'm being silly. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, look at his legs. <laughs> So I suppose it's just the art style and I should just get over it. Because um, it's very Tim Burton-esque and that's why I got it in the first place. I suppose he's got a bit of a wider chest. <laughs> but yeah. Gorgeous coloration overall and... Um, I really love these backs. These are fantastic backs. Um, but yeah, that was the Dark Mansion Tarot. Next is a deck that I actually won in a giveaway. The Wild Wolf Tarot by Briona Jolie Sars and Jessica Tompkins. Um, I won this in an Instagram give giveaway and uh, received it and didn't really connect with it. Um, to be honest, so it is still in order. This um, I don't know really why. I mean, I suppose it's a bit, bit a bit the artwork, a bit the that it's just wolves. Um, like um, I don't know. It. It just didn't really click for me, which was a little bit odd. But there we go. Like, I, I, I think it's, um, yeah, not really for me, but I've been keeping it around in case I want to trade it, if there is anybody who really wants it. It's brand new, never been shuffled. Um, so that's the Wild Wolf Tarot. Next up is another mass market deck. It's the Tarot of Mystical Moments by Katrin Welts Stein. And this is a deck that I've been using quite a lot. Um, I trimmed off the gilding <laughs> as per usual and you can see the gilding here on the on the extra cards um, that I chose not to use because you can actually there's um, extra cards for every male major and the kings in the deck and um, I've chosen the ones I wanted to work with and trimmed them and etched it so uh, yeah this this deck I just really love the artwork she is such a good it's just such a dreamlike world and um, it's given me some really really emotional and deep readings and I've developed quite a connection to this deck. Oh, I yeah. am. Yeah. It's it's definitely one of my favorites. I kept this card I kept drawing <laughs> earlier this year. This card stalked me quite a lot. Um love this seven of cups as well gorgeous it's just every single card this one also stalked me for quite a while and the page of cups um 
so yeah, no, this it's like every single card in this deck is just ab an absolute treat to the eye, and uh, it's it has some really cool interpretations um, that you can like different things that pop out at you. This was my other stalker card. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely a huge favorite in my collection, and it's not going anywhere. That's the Tarot of Mystical Moments. Next we have the Spirit Song Tarot by Paulina Cassidy. This one has also been trimmed um, quite a lot because the cards were humongous in my, in my hands and I uh, trimmed it kind of like, uh, it, well, very inspired by Dawn Michelle. I even edged it in the same colors as her. <laughs> Um, and now it's just such a cutie. Uh, I really like this deck. I use it way too little. I should use it way more often than I do. Um, I, as you probably know by now, I'm very into animal energies. Um, love my animal decks to bits. And um, can't seem to get enough of them, to be honest. <laughs> And I really like the fact that these ones also have two different um, keywords um, for every card. So you can also use it as a um, an oracle deck. And oh god, I love this card so much. Love me my bears. And uh, yeah. Such a, a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. I really love it. Um, Paulina Cassidy goes by Paulina Fay nowadays, I believe. Um, and she's got a lot of decks. I should probably show you my other deck of hers now, straight away after, just to have some consistency in my video. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's jump straight into my other Paulina Cassidy deck. Paulina Fay deck. Um... And that is the Joie de Vivre tarot in my little self homemade tarot bag. This one is also trimmed and I love its little size and I've edged it in this coppery pink rose gold color. Um, love these little creatures. They are so um, full of you know, full of personality and I love that the guidebook has given them all their own names and um, I ought to reconnect with this deck as well. I haven't read with it in a long time now, um, which is a shame because I just, I just really love this world that she's created here. Um... Yeah, such like a fae-like fantasy fairy tale um, feel to these these cards. I love this hermit so much. So that was the Joie de Vivre tarot. Next up is the Druid Craft Tarot in another bag that I've made. Love this, <laughs> love this combination with the gold. I, I've uh, trimmed it and edged it in gold, and I've put have it in this golden shimmery silk bag. Um, and yeah, I have been considering trimming it down even more because I'm not really happy with the how close to the edge the trim came here. So once I am a bit more comfortable with this deck, I will I will uh, trim off the the rest of the titles here.
this is another deck that I really ought to try and get to know more. I sh I'm going to say that about every single deck, I feel, uh, because like I said, I've been really hyper-focusing on just a few decks this past half a year, basically. So um, there are a lot of decks here that needs more attention. This is probably one of my favorite Page of Cups ever, or Princess of Cups. Such a beauty. Love this Ace of Wands as well. The Temperance in this one is also very good. It's called the Feralt. Um, yeah. Gorgeous deck. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous deck. From one thing to another, here we have a deck that Krista, my lovely friend Krista, uh, gifted me. And that is a deck that probably needs no introduction. It's the Deviant Moon Tarot by Patrick Valenza. Um, now, she sent this to me because I said to her that I think this deck is super creepy and I don't like it and <laughs> I will never get it and she said to me that I need to at least try it um, she thought that it was a, a really cool deck and she was also getting the illustrated pips version of the Triumphe de la Luna so she thought she doesn't need both of them and I ended up getting the Triumphe de la Luna as well um, so I have the Triumphe de la Luna warmed me up to Patrick Valenza's artwork because I ended up really loving the Triumphe de la Luna like I mentioned earlier and um, I haven't felt quite ready to dive into the Deviant Moon yet um, but I am not scared of the deck anymore at least I think that the artwork is g gorgeous um, I really like the the coloration of this deck as well, the colors, the the shading, um, the the characters, the personalities they they have. Um, but at the moment, I'm in I'm in a stage in my in my uh, life right now where I'm really appreciating very soft and. Um, very soft and gentle decks and I'm not really there yet with this deck um, so uh, the deviant moon is just going to have to wait <laughs> for me to be a bit more um, a bit stronger I think um, and ready to dive into what this deck has to offer ah uh, next let's to do uh, three decks that are probably leaving my collection. So we have the Universal Celtic Tarot. This is brand new, never been used, never even read with it. I bought it on a whim because I really loved the look of this um, full card. But when I got the full card, I didn't see this in you know, on the pictures online, but his glaring eyes are just so freaking creepy. <laughs> I have a love-hate relationship with this deck. Some of the artwork is just really gorgeous. Like, I really love this uh, Empress, like, a lot. And the Hierophant is fine. Eh, the Lovers are okay. You know, love the Strength card because it's got a bear, but I hate it because she's got him chained. Like, that's not cool. Um, love this hermit card actually, really cool. But then I just, when I was going through this deck and thinking about the artwork, I just got increasingly annoyed with this deck. I don't, I don't really connect with it at all. Um, there's barely any diversity in it. I love this sun card. If the deck could be all be animals like this, then yes, absolutely. This judgment card just cracks me up. 
it's just um yeah i have never used it never read with it bought it like i said on a whim wanted to just uh i was ho having high hopes for it this just reminds me of the hobbits and smaug um yeah so it's just it's like it's like um yeah i haven't really even given it a chance maybe i should but it just annoyed me so much the first time i looked at it and she looks a lot like um what's her face who plays galadriel um why can't i think of her name now This is going to bug me. This is going to bug me so much. Either way. Um, it's not being used. Probably going to leave my collection uh, fairly soon. If I can find anyone else who wants it. <laughs> Another deck that I have never used. That I got on a whim. Uh, is the o Osho Sen Tarot. I got it. Um, mainly because I was watching a, a, a video by Lisa Papes. And really got intrigued by by this deck. Then I, after I bought it, I heard about the controversy about Osho. And um, as you can see, the book is still sealed, never opened. The uh, the cards have been um, looked through, but never shuffled. And I've never read with it. Uh, I've put some of the cards away. But yeah, never really used, have I actually shuffled it? Looks like I have, it's not in order anymore or barely in order. Um, yeah, some of these cards are absolutely breathtaking. I really love, love this card here. Um, and then some of them are just plain creepy or cheesy or like give me weird vibes like um yeah never really started to uh, or never used this deck um other than looking through it like these two really just ah uh, i don't know i don't know it was i thought it was for me and it ended up being not for me and that's okay that's okay so that was the Osho Sen Tarot, also uh, a deck that is in my purgatory box. Next up is a deck um, that I got as a birthday gift a few years back. It's the Tarot of the Divine um, by Yoshi Yoshitani. And now... I don't know why I'm not reading with this deck, or maybe I, I do know, but I, I'm sad that I didn't connect with this deck. I really, really craved it for such a long time, and it's the very first tarot deck that my partner ever gave me. Um, and it was it's kind of like it symbolizes the fact that he actually accepted my hobby <laughs> or my interest in tarot because he was very... He was very skeptic and very um, kind of judgmental at first about my interest in, it, uh, in the tarot. And it's not the, it's not only once that he has, you know, felt that. Do you actually need more than one deck? <laughs> um, so when he got me this one, it felt like he finally uh, just decided that it was okay by him. And um, that he respected and uh, cared about me and the fact that tarot makes me uh, happy and helps me and this deck the artwork is so gorgeous like i just i just i love just sitting and looking at the artwork um but for some reason i'm just not called to read with it and it just makes me sad um yoshi is coming out with um a bigger guidebook for this deck so maybe i should hold off 
on getting rid of this deck um, and see if maybe the the bigger guidebook is going to help. I have this deck and I also have the storybook um, with the short versions of these folk tales. Um, honestly though, I felt like the, short, the folk tales that they presented in that book, uh, they're too short. She's only, or they've only put like a page for each one and I just think that's too little. Like a lot of these folk tales are quite long actually and I feel like they've just rendered it down to the very shortest amount uh, or the shortest version possible and it just takes away so much from the tales. Um, but yeah, really love the artwork and hoping that the guidebook she's now or that they now are putting out um, is going to make this deck more um, readable for me. So that is Tarot of the Divine by Yoshi Yoshitani. Next up we have a very special deck that my friend Krista gifted to me. It's the Anecdotes Tarot. Um, and this one was a Kickstarter and it's trimmed down quite a lot. It was huge, it had huge borders and it's still huge now even though I've trimmed it down all the way to the to the artwork. I've left a little bit of border because um, because of the numbers and such but yeah uh, I really love the artwork of this artist she is known as clownmonger on Instagram I don't actually know her real name um, hang on I have the guidebook printed out here there we go uh, there's the name of the creator of the anecdotes tarot and um, yeah, she has actually, um, for those of, the, of you who see this now and want to have it, um, she has actually uh, just a f like a week ago or so uh, released this deck as a print-on-demand pocket-sized version um, on Game Crafter, I believe. I think maybe also on printer studio or make playing cards I can't remember now she's got all the details in her Instagram and this deck is actually pretty special because uh, she, the creator has based the the artwork and this whole deck around the songs by Joanna Newsom so if you're a big Joanna Newsom fan um, then this deck is definitely something for you um, it's very special to have have a song attached to each and every card of the tarot. Um, I think that's really cool. So um, that is something I am hoping to do in 2023. Um, just take like a card a week maybe or a card a day or every other day and uh, listen to a new Anna, Joanna Newsom song and uh, reflect on that card. This is one of my favorite hanged uh, hanged man or hanged person ever um i really really love this card um so yeah super cool deck really happy that i've got this so grateful to krista for giving it to me um and now it is also available uh, as a pocket version i think i'm gonna i think i might grab that as well <laughs> Because this one, like I said, is still huge and I can still not quite shuffle it properly. <laughs> so this was the Anecdotes Tarot. Next is a little deck um, that is sorely underrated, I feel. Um, it's the Dennis Fairchild Tarot. Uh, it's a tiny little deck that you, you could find uh, in um, like bookshops kind of like a gimmicky thing um for quite a while i don't think this i think this might be out of print now i'm not 100 percent sure this is what the book looks like um 
and this is like the picture on the box as well and uh, yeah I think it's actually called the Nova Tarot in some cer some sentences Nova the Nova Tarot it was printed by running press but I just I love these backs I love the little size of it I've edged it in black um, I think it's a cute little um, simple deck that's got surprisingly you know a surprising punch to it when you start reading with it and the guidebook is actually not half bad either um, yeah I just <laughs> I just really, really love these quirky little, little characters and the the art style in this deck, and uh, yeah, I used to use it. I used this uh, quite a lot in the beginning of twenty twenty two, and um, it's uh, definitely one of the decks that I hold dear in my collection. Love this magician. So, that was the Nova Tarot by Dennis Fairchild. And I don't know if it's in print anymore. Okay, let's do these two next. So this, these are two decks that my friend Andy from Metaphysics Made Easy made. And she sent me uh, them as a gift. This is her a Tarot of Feeling. We've got two different versions of Tarot of Feeling. So let's do the first, this one first. This one has the really lovely gorgeous backs with lilacs on them. Love me some lilac. It's a gorgeous size linen cardstock super well it's not very flexible well a little bit yeah uh, but still linen and she it's like a, a photographic um deck that she's just collected these uh copyright free um pictures i think she's also mixed it with some of her own pictures maybe and uh, made it into a tarot deck. And then we also have this one, which is more of a study deck, um, where she has, um, Again, photographs on one side, but on the other side, we have the meanings of the card. Um, as well as, I believe, yes. So we've got a different version of the magician here. On the flip side, we have the meaning of the magician, as well as the depiction that she chose for this deck. So um, I think that's pretty cool. You can get two different versions or interpretations of the card plus uh, the interpretation or like a message here on the back. So this is these are two very special decks in my collection that my friend made and I really like them. And that is the Tarot of a Feeling by Andy Taylor, um, and you can find that on her Etsy site, um, Metaphysics Made Easy. Next is my pride and joy, my Majestic Earth Tarot. Uh, this is a um, deck that I got tr in a trade. Uh, lucky, lucky me, <laughs> and um, it's one of the factory seconds, but you can barely see anything wrong with this deck, to be honest. It's got, on some cards, this tiny, tiny sliver of, um, 
of uh, like another picture down here in the bottom but it's it's barely noticeable um gorgeous gorgeous backs haven't trimmed up off the gilding on this one um because it's uh, a rather precious and um out of print deck that sells for a lot of money so if i ever decide to get rid of it or I mean, trade it or sell it, um, I would like it to be in as good condition as possible. Um, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Um, uh, this is a art, fine art um, deck uh, that's been collected and, you know, edited by J.D. Hildegard Hinkle. Oops. And... Um, yeah, very interesting deck. Um, comes with four different keywords as well as uh, elemental, elemental and astrological uh, associations on each card. And yeah. This is a deck I, I really need to get back into. I used it quite a lot when I first got it. And then um, then I moved on to other uh, newer things. And I need to circle back to this one. Love this bear card. So much. So yeah, that's the Majestic Earth Tarot. Next up is another very precious deck in my collection. It is the Tolkien or Lord of the Rings tarot uh, by Fix Art on Etsy. Um, this is an indie deck um, and can only be bought, I think, on Etsy. And I love this deck so much. These backs are honestly the, one of the best backs I have ever seen. I love it so much. Um, I've done two different videos on this deck. One quick flip through and one long uh, detailed uh, flip through where I talk about every card at length. <laughs> so if you're interested, those are available on my... On my uh, channel as well uh yeah really really love this deck uh it's the best lord of the rings deck that i have found and uh oh gosh i just adore this hermit so much and uh yeah it's a very very precious precious deck in my collection this one was also gifted to me by my partner so, very, very, very precious deck to me. Now, since this is going to be a very long video, if you have any questions about any of the decks, uh, just pop me a, a comment down below because I, I have a feeling I am not going to have the time or the energy to write in every single name of every single deck um, and creator. So if you have any trouble finding any of these decks and you want to find them and buy them, then just drop me a line below, Ella, and I will help you out. So continuing, this is the Chrysalis Tarot, uh, a deck that I bought a while ago now and uh, had on my wish list forever. And it's just because it's a different system than regular RWS, uh, I still haven't really uh, started using it. I am hoping to um, I am hoping to get to know it better and read the guidebook through and um, start a deep dive of this deck sometime, maybe next year. I have quite a few decks with different systems that I need to study properly um, and I just this year has just not been the year for me to do that um, with this particular deck. 
I adore this artwork though. It's so soft and vibrant at the same time. It's gorgeous in so many ways and I just, I really love the court cards in this one as well. Um, super pretty and magical and I can't wait actually now when I'm holding it to start working with this deck. <laughs> so, and these are the gorgeous backs. And that's the Chrysalis Tarot by Holly Sierra and Tony Brooks. Okay, next up is another Etsy deck. And it should have a creator card here. I reckon, I think it's by Tarot Oracle, who also has a YouTube channel here. Uh, somebody informed me in the comments not long ago. I sh where is that? beginning card there it is uh, animal spirit tarot watercolor art created by wisdom by kk it says here the commenter said that it was created by tarot oracle here on youtube but anyway this is a deck that i haven't really used either i love the artwork i mean it's gorgeous so gorgeous um and there was just something um, that was, it was dissonant, like the, I felt like some of the artwork didn't really connect with the, with the tarot correspondences for me personally, but um, I will be trying to use it as a um, oracle instead. So it's kind of like a tarot and oracle in one. Um, but I decided to include it here in the tarot, tarot um, portion of my collection video. Uh, because it could go either way and I just decided to keep to include it here. <laughs> the artwork is absolutely splendid. I love these backs and um, yeah. Love this. Love that. <laughs> There's so many cards here that I really adore the artwork of and I am going to definitely try and and get to know this deck better and maybe maybe work through some of my issues with it. <laughs> so, um, that was the Animal Spirit Tarot by Tarot Oracle and Wisdom by KK. Next, we have the Shimmering Veil Tarot by Scylla Conway. Uh, this is a masterpiece of a deck that I have been way too scared to use <laughs> it's got this fantastic um like holographic gilding but like you like you you know me i really don't like the harshness of gildings but i this is since this is a uh borderless deck i've really not felt um certain about about uh, trimming it and I haven't had the guts to use this very much I've pulled a few cards and the readings have been really strong and like I've said several times by now I've needed something very comforting this year um, and this deck is just it just exudes magic and primal energy and like something very yeah deep and I can't really think of the English word right now but mysterious and dark at some times and yeah the shimmering veil tarot by Scylla Conway I actually have two uh, copies of this one of them is completely sealed 
because Scylla accidentally, I ordered when I ordered this deck, um, I ordered this one and the Davis Oracle. Uh, but when it arrived, she had sent me two, two copies of the Shimmering Veil Tarot um, because two orders got mixed up so I got I received the order that somebody else placed uh, on the same day as me um, so she very graciously said uh, that I could keep both decks and that she would send out the Davis Oracle for me um, free of charge so um, basically I got a free second copy um, all sealed up and I haven't really known what to do with it yet. If I'm going to gift it to someone or uh, trade. I've kept it mostly, I think, for trading. Uh, but yeah. Okay. We only have a few decks left, believe it or not. So um, let's crack on, shall we? Next one is a, a mass, the mass market version, version of the Circo Tarot. And it was sold by Urban Outfitters for a while, and it was called How to Deal, is what it was called. Um, How to Deal, um, but it's basically a second edition of the Circle Tarot, just in mass market form, but this one is now out of print and quite difficult to get a hold of. And um, yeah, I. This was actually, I think, one of the first, very first decks that I bought secondhand through a Facebook group um, while it was still in print. So I got it for a very, very good price uh, from a lady in Ireland, I believe. And uh, yeah, this is a really fun deck. Um, some of the cards were changed from the indie version, which I wasn't very, very happy with because the indie version um, cards of the deck uh, spoke to me more. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> and I uh, love this Five of Wands. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, this is a deck that I read with quite a lot in the beginning and hasn't gotten much use lately but I will definitely try and reconnect with it soon because it's so colorful and quite interesting and um, yeah that's the uh, how to deal tarot um, mass market version of the circle tarot and I can't remember the creator's name now, and I'm very sorry about that. Next is <laughs> a deck I should have cho shown you earlier, uh, at the same time as I shown you the showed you the the Llewellyn version. Um, so I'm just going to quickly, you know, show you my trimmed version of the Red Feather Schiffer Red Feather edition that I got before I got had got my hands on the Llewellyn, Llewellyn version of this guy and tarot um, I, I love this deck but this version of the deck is just it's so thick and and so unruly to handle um, even even after I have trimmed off the gigantic blue borders um, the only thing that I that this version has going for it is that I think the artwork pops a lot better in this version. The the car the colors are much brighter and sharp. The artwork is sharper, like more in focus. And um, I don't know what to do with this with this copy. If I I might actually try and just trim it down just to the artwork and have it. Uh, as a spare copy um, we'll see but anyway that's the guy and tarot the Schiffer red feather edition and this one is still in print and available mass market next up is the Anna K tarot both the indie version and the mass market version so 
This is the mass market version that I have trimmed. And this is the indie version that I've left as is. Um, I have used mainly the mass market version because the indie version is quite a lot darker. It's smaller, which is nice, but it's thicker, which is not very nice. Um, and the artwork in the mass market version is brighter and a bit more saturated and um, has more contrast to it. So it's easier to see the, the artwork in the mass market version. And the mass market version is a thrill to shuffle as well. I really love the sh way it shuffles. So like, as you can see, it's the indie version is quite dark, but it's also matte, whereas the mass market is glossy. So this is a deck that um, I got quite early in my, like, when I got back into tarot and uh, the mass market version, I actually bought second hand through Facebook, a Facebook group and the indie version I purchased straight from the creator through her website. And I got the indie version first. And then I realized when I got it that it was quite thick and cardboardy and very unflexible. And I was scared to use it because it was like one of my first indie decks that I got. Um, so I decided to get the, the mass market one to study with. And I ended up just loving the mass market one uh, more uh, because of its ease of handling. And um, yeah, although I really do love the, the, the indie version as well, I just I just tend to be a lot more careful with that one. So um, that is the Anna K Tarot by Anna K. Okay, next up is the Morgan Greer Tarot. And I have not actually used this one very much. Um, the cards have a, a funny feel to them, in my opinion. Um, I'm not really sure what it is, uh, if it's the like coating on the cards um but yeah i thought i was going to love this deck when i got it this is one of the first decks i got as well when i started getting into tarot again because everybody was raving about it it was this one and the borderless um yes it was this one and the borderless rider wade smith that i got for studying and although i really love the artwork in this deck I think I would much prefer to work with the the pocket thin version of this deck because like like you know I've got small hands and and I just um end up using the smaller decks a lot more. This one I can still hold but it kind of hurts and it stretches my hand a lot. So um yeah. Not the biggest fan of the backs to be honest. Um Wish they would release a version with a different type of back. <laughs> um, but yes, I have been considering getting the tin, tinned version for quite a while. But at the same time, if I'm not using this one and I'm not feeling drawn to use this one, why would I work with the, the smaller one? I don't know. Should I get the tinned version? What do you think? Next is another mass market deck, the Tarot del Fuego by Ricardo Cavolo. And um, <laughs> this is a crazy deck. Um, I've considered giving this away several times. Um, it's, <laughs> it's like you can see straight away, we've got a boob here just spraying milk into the Ace of Cups. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of an insane deck. Uh, it's got fire everywhere and it, that's kind of... I got this one way too early in my tarot uh, tarot journey. Um, I love the, the, the size of the Fournier decks because this is a Fournier deck. Um, but yeah, 
the fire and the ice in every card just really, really, um, it just confuses me in a reading. I tried reading with this so many times, but I just can't stop looking at all the eyes and the fire and using that in my reading. And I, I don't know, like ice and fire are such strong symbols to me that um, it just kind of overshadows everything else that goes on in the card. So I have a really hard time reading with this deck even though I think the artwork is really fun really really fun um like <laughs> it's just uh yeah super super interesting deck but I just haven't been able to read with it look at this oh yeah if you have this and you like reading with it and it speaks a lot to you, just let me know what what your thoughts are and um, if you have any tips on how to overcome my predicament. Next up we have another Fournier deck, the Tarot de Luz by Aitor Saraita. And um, yeah... Another deck I bought on a whim. It was, what, 14 euros, very cheap. Um, on sale when I got it. And um, another really nice size deck. <laughs> the characters are really cute and quirky. Um, I really love the, like I said before, I love my watercolor art. Um, as you can see, the deck is in order because um, I ordered it, like I said, on a whim. Didn't realize that it was very, <sighs> yeah, it's like, kind of like Rider Waite Smith, but also Marseille. And then we come to the, we come to the pipish nature of the miners um however now when i'm looking at it maybe i'm i think i might be evolving in my tarot practice because these don't feel very pipish anymore although they i mean i suppose they would be called semi pips but yeah i got a bit taken aback when i saw it when it arrived and i put it away thinking i'll look at it another day and here we are, and I'm thinking, hmm, why am I not reading with this deck? <laughs> so, and these are the pretty backs, pink and lovely. Next, one more, uh, e my market deck, the Margaret Peterson Tarot. Um, I tried so hard to get the right version of this deck. Um, I wanted the version that... that... Um, Kelly from The Truth and Story has, uh, which doesn't have any borders on the back. Um, however, they sent me this version, even though they had the version, the borderless versions, um, ISBN on the website. And um, I sent that deck back and they sent resent it out and they sent me the same version again. So um, I just gave up and stuck with this one. Um, this is a deck that intimidates the heck out of me. <laughs> I have pulled a few cards and read from the guidebook and that's been the extent of my use of this deck. I am, I am planning on uh, trimming this so that I can use it better. Uh, but this kind of has the same feel as the Shimmering Veil Tarot to me. You know, it's got this really energetic artwork full of life and mystery. And uh, I don't know, it's just something about the artwork here. Oil paintings overall uh, in Tarot seem to have very a lot of soul to me. Um, and because it's kind of abstract art in a lot of the cards like this card i feel doesn't really go with the rest of the deck i mean it feels like this this card artwork is completely different it's almost like it's done by a completely different artist um 
And that kind of bothers me a little bit, but yeah. I wish that the whole deck was like this instead of maybe like this, you know? Or these really way abstract um, miners. But yeah. So this is a deck I've hardly ever used, except for just pulling one card and reading the message every now and then. And I suppose, you know, some cards can just be that way. Or decks, I mean. You don't... Every deck doesn't have to be used in the same way. That would be quite boring. So that's the Margaret Peterson Tarot. Next up is another really generous gift from my friend Krista. She's just one of the most lovely friends I have. Um, and she gifted me this gorgeous tree spirit or nature spirit um, tarot. Uh, this one is available uh, from Printer Studio, I believe, Print on Demand deck. Um, and it's got the most amazing um, guidebook that belongs with this deck. Um, it is a photo deck future featuring trees from all over the world. And it's got the... the tarot correspondence uh, on here as well as the name of the tree as and a keyword so it can be used as a tarot as an oracle and the guidebook has really really awesome information about the trees where they grow some mythology and like folklore about the trees and history it's, it's fan if you are a fan of trees, this is the deck for you, definitely. And yeah, I, I had the most amazing first reading with this with this deck where the first very, very first card I pulled um, was the Rowan tree, um, which is the full card in this deck. And Rowan, uh, if you don't know, um, through my other videos is the English name for um, my surname in English is Rowan Leaf um, when it's translated from Swedish so uh, the Rowan tree has a very sp very um, very strong I have a very strong connection to the Rowan tree um, and I got chills when I pulled that card um, out in my garden when I first received this deck. Um, so yeah, let's see if I can find that tree, that card for you now, just so that, there it is. No, that was the, f there it is. The Wanderer instead of the Fool, which I think is really, really gorgeous. I love this deck. I love this deck so much. So that was the Tree Spirit Tarot. I said Nature Spirit earlier, didn't I? This is the Tree Spirit Tarot by um, Laurel. Yeah, Laurel um, Virtues Wa Waters. <laughs> Laurel Virtues Waters. Um, and this is the book that comes with it. Super amazing book in full color as well love it next is the witch's wisdom tarot um by phyllis curot and danielle barlow um gorgeous deck has its own system haven't worked with it yet too big and chunky for my hands and it kills me because the artwork is so gorgeous i want to work with this deck so much but look at the size of this thing it's so chunky so chunky and like it i can't I, I can barely even i can barely even stretch my hands to grab like a third of the deck it's so big and thick and ugh, i hate handling this deck it's just it just doesn't feel good and it's already even though i haven't used it it's got this weird 
bow to it as well, so it's even more annoying to handle. And I can't shuffle it at all. I'm so upset because I want to work with this deck so badly. Um, and I think I'm going to have to try and trim it down a lot uh, in order to do so. And I saw that Dawn Michelle had trimmed it down. But even if I trim it down, it's still going to be as thick, which just I don't understand why. Why do they have to make them so thick? It's just, it makes the cards brittle and uh, difficult to work with. But again, Daniel Barlow's art just speaks straight to my heart. And I am hoping to start working with this deck in the next year. It's gorgeous and just so potent. Love this card so much. And uh, yeah, need to try and f sort this out so that I can work with it. Next up is a deck I wasn't even sure if I was going to show you, um, but I've shown it a few times on my ch channel already. It is the Lunar Larpin Tarot, but it's my accidental fake version of the Lunar Larpin Tarot. I bought this on Etsy and I thought I was buying from a legit seller. When it arrived, I got a bit um, confused because it was so small and it didn't come with a guidebook. And then I realized, oh no. I've bought a fake. But for being a fake, the cardstock is surprisingly good. And the artwork is also, you know, sharp and well printed. Um, so I was very surprised actually. But Equally still very gutted and sad that I had given my money to a criminal, basically. Um, of course, they wouldn't accept any returns. They wouldn't refund me. And um, all I could do was lodge a complaint to Etsy that hasn't gone anywhere. So... I am now stuck with this deck that I still I don't want to move it on either. I don't think that it would be, would be fair to sell or sell this deck or give it away to somebody. Um, so I've just decided that this was a mistake. It wasn't intentional and I'm gonna use the deck uh, and I really love it. Um, I love this deck and I have been wanting to buy the the real version but nowadays you can't get the real version anymore without buying also the 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 oracle card together with the tarot deck and it's super expensive to do that and i just i don't i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to so um the only card here that's a little bit off is this death card it's got this leaky edge here where the ink has gone over to over the white white of it so yeah that's the Luna Larpin tarot be mindful you guys when you're buying online that you are not buying fakes uh, because you you'll end up feeling really bad about it and uh, yeah not supporting the real artists so next up is this majors only deck this is the only majors only deck i have um it is the triple goddess tarot and um, i got this mainly because the artwork is just so fantastic this is the backs or well, these are the backs and they have a couple of cards that are uh, separate which are the chakra cards A card for each chakra but because I don't use chakras or I don't work with work with chakras um, I don't really use them um, then we also have the the deck um, and the artwork is so gorgeous I really love this artwork and connect with it very deeply um, 
the guidebook is super nice. This is actually the only goddess deck I have, I think. Um, which explains why I haven't really worked with it much because I'm I'm I've just I'm just not a very big on deity work. At least not yet. I thought so I was going to, that's why I got the deck, but yeah, it just hasn't turned out that way. Um yet at least. But the artwork is super gorgeous. And um yeah. It's part of my collection at at this point at time at least. Uh might be um getting rid of it if I don't start using it soon. Um and this is the just a random random bag I bought for it. And next is my MJ Cullinane deck, Guardian of the Night Tarot, uh, indie deck, indie version of the tarot, yeah. And um, this is the only MJ deck I have, actually, um, and I really like the guidebook. I bought the, had to buy the guidebook separately through Amazon, um, but the artwork... This, love this artwork it's a uh, it's really pretty and I love all of the animals in here and the animals she's chosen um I have had this deck got me through some very very dark times actually I've had some really strong readings with this deck um haven't used it in a while now uh, I have been thinking about trimming it down but since it's the since it's the indie deck, indie version, I've been hesitating. Um, it's now out mass market, this deck, but decided not to pick that one up because I have the indie version. I did edge it in a very matching um, bluish green, um, which I really like how it turned out. Um, but yeah, this is the Guardian of the Night Tarot by MJ Cullinane. And love, love this card. <laughs> Next up is my Wildwood Tarot. And um, I am still debating whether to trim this or not. Um, I think I would use it more if I trimmed it because I would be able to handle it better. Love the artwork. Worthington's artwork is just so amazing. Um, so many ways. I need to get to know this deck but again because it's got a different system I have held off and now I've got so many different systems that I want to work with and I feel overwhelmed and therefore I don't use them <laughs> I should have I mean I started I started learning this deck with Krista but I think she just kept up with it and um I stopped so I really need to get back to it and uh, maybe she'll help me out wink wink <laughs> behind the camera <laughs> gorgeous gorgeous deck love this artwork so much um i just need to give it the proper time of day to get to know it the wildwood tarot by oh uh, Mark, Ryan and John Matthews with the artwork of... What's his name now? Not Will. Is it Will Worthington? Yes, it is Will Worthington. <laughs> Brain fart there. Will Worthington. Okay. We have two more decks. And the next one is... The Llewellyn Tarot that I have trimmed down and edged. These are the backs. Gorgeous, gorgeous deck. Love this artwork so much. Love this size so much. And this is completely inspired by Dawn Michelle. This is one of her favorite decks. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous deck. Love it so much. And the book is really nice with all the... Uh, mythology and the stories in there as well um, so I'm, I'm this is one of the first actually this is the first deck that I ever trimmed and I I 
was hooked after that. I have a hard time not trimming my decks. If there's even a slightest bit that I don't like on it, I tend to trim it off. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, so in love with this deck. Really, uh, this moon card is, it's got to be one of the best moon cards out there. Love it to bits. So that's the Llewellyn Tarot. And I really hope I haven't left any deck out now. Uh, I don't think so. I looked through all of my uh, stash. So we have one more left. And it's a French deck that I'm really bad at pronouncing. So I'm just going to say the English name. And it's the Tarot of Strange Antlers. And this is a deck that's also very thick and chunky. And it was very big. And... I've trimmed it and edged it so that I can at least overhand shuffle it. Um, before it was trimmed, I was struggling to even do that. And oh, I love this deck. I love this deck so incredibly much. It's one of my all-time favorites. It's gorgeous. I just wish it had better cardstock. It's so thick, so unflexible. Um, it sticks together when I shuffle it. As you can see, it's also got this weird bow to it. So it's kind of like flopping about on the desk. Um, but I get the most amazing readings with this deck. It's like nothing I've experienced before, really. This is like, it's like it's speaking to my soul. <laughs> I'm not going to call it a soul deck because I haven't been able to read the guidebook because it's in French. Um, I really, really want this deck to come out on the English mash market uh, with English titles, an English guidebook and maybe linen cardstock or at least something thinner than this um, if it came out again in a different cardstock even if it's in French I would pick it up straight away the, uh, that's the only thing like I love everything about this deck it's so amazing I love the artwork so much um, so the only thing that's like the the, the, uh, the stock card stock and the way of shuffling it is the only thing. If I could shuffle this, if I could riffle shuffle this card, this deck, um, I think the connection would just be amazing. But as it is, the the fumbliness of me handling this deck is is uh, hindering a connection with this deck. Um, like a, a stronger and deeper connection to this deck. So this is the Tarot of Strange Antlers. Yes, le tarot au ramour est étrange. I tried to pronounce it anyway. I'm so sorry if any French people are watching this. <laughs> anyway, fantastic, fantastic deck. Um, Really, really hope it comes out in, in English uh, at some point. This is the most powerful um, Queen of Swords ever. Um, yeah, love, 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 love. And the backs are fantastic. So, oh, you guys, we did it. We, we went through all of my tarot decks, every single one of them. And the next video I will be making is my oracle deck collection so i've um, i hope that you've enjoyed this this um, little look through my tarot decks and uh, i hope that you didn't suffer too long through it um let me know if you feel like i should have had this structured somehow you know in different categories or alphabetically or through like genre or something i don't know um i felt like that felt very overwhelming to me so I just decided to just go through them randomly just grab whichever one was closest um, at hand so um, thank you so so much for watching I hope you enjoyed please take care of yourselves and be well my friends bye